me. Um, I would like to say some words about Shavuos, and I believe that the underpinnings of Shavuos, in a sense, represent the women of Kali Yisrael. Shabbos, there's a bris between Kali Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. A bris means some kind of a treaty, and every treaty is bipartisan. What do we do on Shabbos? We don't work on Shabbos. What does HaKadosh Baruch Hu do on Shabbos? So the Gemara tells us that Rabbi Akiva told somebody, you want to know about a Kodesh Baruch Hu's Shabbos, Sambation Anor, the mountain, the river of Sambation also ceases to work on Shabbos. Doesn't throw its stones like Shabbos. We rest, a Kodesh Baruch Hu rests. It happens in a mirror way. That's part of a treaty. It has to be a two-way deal. Kodesh Baruch gave us the Torah. In a sense, we all know that there was a Nasev and Ishma. We accepted it. And we also know that a Kodesh Baruch Hu forced us to accept the Torah. Kofu Aleim Harkikikis. That's how a Kodesh Baruch Hu is relating to us. How do we relate to HaKadosh Baruch Hu on Shavuos? The Maral points out something which I think is very important. In the Torah, Shavuos is called Chag Abikurim. There is no mention of Kabbalah Satayra on Shavuos in the Torah. That's quite odd. To us nowadays in particular, the focal point of Shavuos is Kabbalah Sartaira, Bikurim. We're not really in agriculture altogether. It's almost a totally insignificant item. Very strange. And I would like to share with you a personal story which I had, which I believe expresses womanhood to the nth degree. I was in America about seven or eight years ago, and somebody asked to have a meeting with me, somebody that I know him very well. And he told me, this fellow had two children at the time, he said, you probably aren't aware, you haven't followed me, but you should know, my wife almost died in childbirth twice. And my wife told me, after Benise Nisim, she made it through the second childbirth. She said, no more for me. And I understand her. I understand my wife 100%. Not only her own life, she has children, she has responsibility to raise. I'm not coming to you with a halachic question. This happened, and I was broken. I wanted to have more children. But I understood my wife's position. And I went to speak to a well-known mashkiach. I actually had the pleasure of being that mashkiach on my trip to America by chance last week. And he told me something. I'm telling you over a story. And I would like to share with you what he told me. The Torah gives a commandment to men to have children. There is no commandment for women to have children. Why is that so? It's not a direct command. And he answered. It's not his answer. Because to bear children is sakonis nefoshes. 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not demand of a person to put himself out to that degree. A woman is not obligated. But what HaKadosh Baruch Hu did was he put into the makeup of womanhood a desire to have children. And they voluntarily have children. Your wife will come around. That's what he told this fellow as words of chizuk. Just to make a story end off beautifully, it happened to be that Baruch Hashem had another child, and I was echad to be the mail at that bris, and it was a very moving experience to me. I'm sure that all of you are familiar with this idea that this great mashkiach said, the Maral tells us that he understands to accept the Torah is no easy feat. For him to call it Zman Matan Torah Seinu, that's not fair. HaKadosh Baruch Hu calls the Chagim, the way he relates to us, through the Chagim, is in a way that we find it positive. Chag HaBikurim. Zmag Simchaseinu. Chag HaMatzos. Kodesh Baruch Hu speaks to us about the good things. We in our response, in our relationship with our Kodesh Baruch Hu, we think about the things that we consider awesome. We understand that accepting the Torah is difficult. We know it's hard. We are proud to say it's a Zman Matan Torah saying. From our vantage point, we have a right to speak about it like that. Pesach, we call Chag Pesach because of the great things HaKadosh Baruch Hu did for us. He passed over our house. HaKadosh Baruch Hu discusses Pesach, Chag HaMatzos, that we went out with nothing. Always highlighting the strong points of the person who we come into bond with. Something very interesting happened. At Kabbalah Sater. The Torah was supposed to be given on the sixth day of Sivim. Moshe Rabbeinu added in another day. And the Torah was given on the seventh day. The Maral tells us from a Kodesh Baruch Hu's vantage point, he was ready and waiting on the sixth day. We celebrate our partner's desire to enter into contract with us. We celebrate Shavuos as when HaKadosh Baruch Hu was ready to accept us as a nation. The Torah actually was given on the 7th. And that's when we accepted the Torah. We don't celebrate what we do. We celebrate what our partners do. Shavuos is a time that women may feel left out. If it wouldn't be for the women, the men wouldn't be in the best marriage. When a woman makes it possible, whether it's the night of Shavuos, the day of Shavuos, when she makes it possible for her husband to grow, that's what the Yom Tov Shavuos is about. Reflecting on the positiveness of our second half. Whether it's in the relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, whether it's in the relationship 
with our spouses, that's part of our job. Sometimes, it's not glorious. But somebody will say, so what happened on the sixth day of Siva? Nothing. But you know what happened? HaKadosh Baruch Hu said, I'm willing to wait a day because you want another day. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that something to celebrate? I think that's something which shows the selflessness of a relationship, which makes Shua so special. Learning Torah is a wonderful thing. A man needs an anchor. A man needs a home. I was speaking to a woman a short while ago, and she was speaking about somebody who lost their wife. And he said, don't you see he's lost? What does that mean? What does the wife do? Sometimes being silent, just being there, is what gives people the ability to go forward. HaKadosh Baruch Hu had to win over the women before the men. Because it's not possible for the man to excel without the woman. That's part of her job. I just want to add a scientific study. And I believe that this scientific study, any from a person knows this naturally. But it sometimes it makes you feel good to find out that that's the way it is in the world of science too. Couples who the husband is successful, generally their marriages are very strong. In marriages that the wife is more successful than the husband, there's a lot of stress in those marriages. It's a scientific study. There's natural positions for people to take. When the women say, where am I? What am I doing? Your success is being silent. I think many times about the athletes who have trainers. The trainer is almost as good an athlete as the professional. He gets no covet at all. Yet, the athlete knows that if it wouldn't be for his trainer, he'd never get to where he has to be. The athlete himself understands that his trainer is indispensable. The women who come to Shavuos and create an atmosphere that the home is a place for Ruchni is to grow and to be proud of doing mitzvahs. Whether it's those who have the minig, if you finish Sviras Omer, you can have your cheesecake. Or whether it is that they're happy to come to shul to make sure that the kids are quiet so their father should sleep, whatever it is. When they make the home a place that is apparent and palatable, that Ruchni is, is the supreme coveted issue in the home, they're the ones who cause the success. Kodesh Baruch Hu turns to the women first. When they accept the Torah, 
the men will follow suit. The women have the ability on a dime. Medrash tells us when it came to donating to the Mishka, was the women who did it first? Comes to mitzvahs, the women are inspired and have the ability to jump to a place where men don't have that ability. In their own sneestic way, the women are the trailblazers in their home. And the men who succeed, it's really because of the backbone of their home. May we all be zeicha, and every one of you, and the whole kahila as one, to go forward, to shine, by bringing out the best in ourselves and our bodies, our kodesh, and realizing that it's the woman who has the ability naturally that when she shines in our Avodah HaKodesh, the rest of the home will certainly follow not only our bond with our spouses and our children, but our bond with HaKodesh Baruch Hu will reciprocate and HaKodesh Baruch Hu will grant each and every one of us a year of brocha and atzlocha.